So every month I do a video what I'm sowing and growing in month X. So the next one I'll be doing is October. But I also like to do a follow up video just to show you how those seedlings that I sowed in that month have progressed. And a lot of them have been planted out now. So I thought I'd do a quick whiz around the plot and show you the things that I've got planted. And then I'll show you the seedlings that are still at home. Um, and then that's pretty much it. And you have to wait for a few more days to see what I'm sowing in October. And it's still quite a lot. So actually, ironically, these first seedlings are not from September. They're from the 19th of August. And so we've got some salad rocket looking quite nice, some pat choy with a few holes, flea beetle holes, some tatsoi, same flea beetle holes, and not too bad there. I'm quite happy with them. And you know, the colder it gets, the less flea beetle holes we'll have, and the less slug damage. I think I lost one plant there to slugs. And then kind of the same sort of timeline. So I've got herbastella in here, which is the main crop. And that's interplanted with turnips and radishes. The radishes are always ready earlier. They'll be about two weeks until they're ready, but we can still start taking some of the leaves. They're really nice in smoothies. And eventually the herbastella will sort of expand to fill this bed. So next up, we've got one of our autumn, this is an autumn salad bed. Um, and this one is flashy trout. It's a gorgeous looking lettuce, very tasty, nice texture to it. It's interplanted with stirron, which is a main crop onion, but you can use it as a spring onion as well. I'm using it as a spring onion here. These were planted 19th of August as well. So that's about a month ago and they're doing quite nicely. The onions are slightly older. It's always a good idea to have your onions slightly older than your um, lettuces if you're doing this into plant. Two or three weeks is enough. It means that by the time the lettuces are starting to overlap with the onions, the onions are much taller than the lettuces. And so they're not bothered at all. They grow away quite happily together. This bed is just currently under a mesh tunnel, just because I've got nowhere else to put the mesh tunnel, it doesn't really need it. But by October time, I'll almost certainly, depending on the weather, be putting a low tunnel over the top of this. I'll show you one of those in a minute. Flashy trout is a really great winter lettuce. It's pretty reliable, lasts until kind of April time, probably something like that. By that time, I'm ready to take it out anyway, because I want to put something else in probably something like uh, early sprouts, which I grow for leaves by planting the, the sprout plants really, really high density. But uh, you'll see that in a later video. I've lost one plant there, look. So next up is another salad bed. This is an experimental bed. So all the varieties in here, I've never grown over winter before. And so I can afford to lose this bed but I've still got my spring onions in here and obviously I could just replant it later on in the season. Lettuces you can replant, um, well I, I've planted them in December and they grow away really nicely, provided they're under some cover um, and you get a fantastic uh, crop in spring. So I've got a canasta there, that's really a fantastic summer lettuce but I like it so much I'm going to try and grow it over winter with protection of course. Uh, Smile, which is a nice green oak leaf lettuce. Never grown that before actually. Nigel from the Muddy Boots channel recommended that. We're both going to give it a go over winter. He's going to use his um, veggie pod, I think, for his. I'm just going to use my standard coal frames, low tunnels, more canasta. And this was free on um, Grow Your Own magazine cover. Uh, I can't remember exactly the name, but if you look in the description of the video, you'll see all the details of everything that I'm talking about. Um, this is meant to be a, a nice winter lettuce. It does look nice so far. So uh, I'm quite pleased and excited to uh, give that one a go. And some more canasta. Okay. Next up is a double bed of Roxy. And this is one of my favorite uh, winter lettuces. 
and it br brings to mind the fact that often people think that uh, the name of a lettuce or any vegetable actually means something so when somebody names something the marvel of winter you think oh that's going to be a fantastic winter lettuce or when somebody says winter density you think yes that's what i need winter density or marvel of all seasons or something like that but actually pretty frequently they are not particularly great uh, winter lettuces um, that's just the name that somebody chose for them uh, so this is Roxy I think this is one of the very best winter lettuces it does need protection but it's really reliable it has this amazing red leaf it gets darker and darker with time I think it's much better than Marvel of All Seasons, for example, and yeah, I highly recommend it, but it does need protection. And that's the protection that this one's going to have, a little low tunnel. Oh, and I forgot to mention, of course, like all my beds, there's a lot of spring onions in them. Each one of these beds is about a month's supply of spring onions, and we won't have any more so now until probably February, January, February time, something like that. We won't be eating those probably until April, May time. So the ones that we've got, they have to last us a long time. So you'll see lots and lots of beds full of spring onions. So this is a spare bed. It's going to be carrots. I'll talk about carrots a bit later on, but I hate to have a spare bed and I'm not planting the carrots until later. So. I just filled it with radishes, turnips, and just a few spare lettuces. So this is the chard that I planted about three weeks ago. It's coming on really nicely. A little bit damaged to some of the leaves, but uh, I'm gonna start picking this now quite aggressively to keep it fairly low so that it fits in this coal frame and the lid will go on the coal frame fairly soon. So I planted this bed in August, just to week or so a couple of weeks after the uh, onions had been harvested and basically this is just a again a gap filling bed spinach and turnips and radishes most of the radishes have been harvested now this will be field beans uh, and that will be field beans over winter and we'll be harvesting those field beans from about December through to about April time and then we'll plant brassicas in this bed. And the turnips are doing really nicely. I'm really pleased with those. Looking lovely. Another quick gap filling bed. This is spinach. This is two months old. I've been harvesting this for a while now. And I've just planted this Grenoble red salad bed. Again, spring onions. These are white Lisbon. I think this is the last of the white Lisbon there. Now we're going to switch over to North Holland Blood Red for all the next batch of plantings. So I've just started planting out the Tough Ball, which is an overwintering onion. And this one's quite densely packed because we're going to take some of these and grow them for pickling onions early, very early in the season. I've just started putting some of these into the polytunnel for an early crop. So these are the ones that won't be for pickling onions. There's about a month supply there. Really, the, the only point, no point putting more than about a month supply in the polytunnel because the outdoor ones will be ready uh, within a month. And I've interplanted this with garlic cloves, really tightly spaced, so there's a about a month's supply there of green garlic which is just ordinary garlic it's just harvested for the stems and the monobulb rather than the cloves which form later so then this is another bed of Grenoble red so these were planted in September 2nd of September so they're only uh, three weeks old and so what have we got here? We've got Grenoble Red, which is a fabulous lettuce. This is the best of all of the overwintering lettuces. It's pretty good all year round actually, but it's not very good in spring, summer. Um, and then we've got Roxy down the middle, an alternate with 
Bijou, oh, Tessie actually, Tessie, yeah, uh, which is a beautiful red lettuce. And so the mix here, although Grenoble Red says red, it's actually a green lettuce just with red tinges on the ends of the, on the edges of the leaves. So I like a lot of colour in our salad mixes. And so basically we've got to make up a salad, something like Grenoble Red as the base, because that's the best lettuce and then some Tessie or Bijou, which are really bright red lettuces. And then Roxy, which is kind of a purpley red lettuce. Uh, and then North Holland Blood Red Spring Onions, which are a beautiful um, purpley red spring onion. And then probably something like Radicchio, which again is a bright red and white uh, leaf. So you get lots and lots of colour in lettuce mixes. And then we'll add radishes and turnips and things like that, and a bit of parsley perhaps, to make up the whole. And then this is the early garlic bed. So there's nothing to see there. But again, there's about a month's supply of garlic, which will just be harvested one month before the uh, main crop garlic. And then basically the same as in that other bed. So this is my main winter carrot bed all tucked away, protected from the carrot root fly. This is the bed that we're currently harvesting from. To do carrots for very early spring in containers, and that's what these are. So these are sown in August, been outside for a long time. They've only just come into the polytunnel, put in on some good growth, quite pleased with them keeping them high up again to keep them away from the carrot fly. And I will do carrots in the ground for mid spring um, and into late spring. But I'll talk about those later because they're not, uh, they're in the sowing video, not the growing video. But I'm pretty pleased with these. I've got three boxes of these, two more down here. And looking quite, quite nice, quite happy with those. And finally, I think you'd like to see the late French beans. Lots and lots of flowers on these now. These are about a month old. First few little French beans coming. Can you see those? There. So I'm quite excited for these. Hopefully can keep these plants going all the way through October. And then I've got some in the uh, conservatory, which hopefully will keep going just into November. And I'm just starting to fill these containers. These were the outdoor tomatoes all around here. And I'll gradually fill these up with a wide variety of winter greens and garlic and things like that. And then I've got the last of my French beans which is just starting to come into flower. It's just reached the top. I think this is a month old, this one. So I'm in my conservatory grow room now and I've got some, here's the last, I think, couple of trays of spring onions still to go in. So these are North Holland Blood Red. I've got two more of these trays, so I've got four in total. These are Tough ball, again planted quite densely, and these are for pickling onions, early pickling onions. So uh, we should get uh, a really nice crop of those. And then these don't need to be inside because they're only inside because the storm's coming and I don't want them to get too saturated. So these are lamb's lettuce, uh, salad rocket, winter miner's lettuce, it's also called Claytonia. It's a really lovely um, winter veg, that one. And another tray of lamb's lettuce. And then outside, this is the September sowing of spinach. And these are giant winter, all the top three, I think. And then down here, we've got some Medania. That's only seven days old or so over seven days um, and I've got some America and some Medania 
and some red kitten so lots of spinach in here and then spare lettuces spare spinaches and then those are all these have all been pricked out uh, these are under, under the grow lights so these are just spares of various brassicas that's pretty much it and then these are 12 days old these are just the uh, main salads for the polytunnel beds and there's a lot of spares here just in case and then down here these are the salads for the last of the coal frames and then these are all the brassicas so we've got some Chinese kale, some green curly kale, some scarlet kale, and then spring cabbages. So we've got spring cabbages there, spring cabbages here, and black magic, that's a Tuscan kale there. So these kales are all going in under low tunnels. The spring cabbage will grow on a bit and then that will go in one of the coal frames the chervil is going to go in the polytunnel and that is about it i think apart from a little tray and uh, so we've got some more black magic some red ursa kale some sympomatic that's a red curly kale and a few spare lettuces there and the last few cucumbers so this is the cucumber from late august and it's going up nicely quite a few cucumbers on it i've got another one up there so hope you like this quick video my name is steve this is the seaside allotment channel and i'll see you soon